All right, let's go over uh, quiz number nine. December uh, 14, 2017, this is 4.1 to 4.6, not including 4.4. This is version A. Using the letters in question number two, match the following by putting one letter per blank. So I recognize that there are four letters, one, two, three, and four. Of these four letters, vertex form has a parentheses to the power of two. So you could have either put G or I in there and got full credit. You only need to put one per blank, so you had a extra options. Um, the one with double parentheses, that's intercept or, or factor form, that's letter E. In standard form has no parentheses, that would be F in descending order. Question number two, match the following. By putting one letter underneath the graph, one equation will not be used. Um, the hardest one, because there's two vertex forms, I have negative x plus 4 squared minus 2. So anytime you see the plus sign, just write it with two negatives. Because then that tells you your h value there is negative 4 and your k value is negative 2. So if I go left 4, left 4, uh, not that one. Um, so notice how none of these graphs have left 4 down 2. Now here's the tricky part about this. Each of the graphs are different in how they count the x-axis. For example, this one is counting every uh, 2 is equal to 5. So that means each box is equal to 2.5. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to use G. F, A value is opening up, and your y-intercept is negative 1. So I need something that just opens up, so that means I can't use I. I mean, I can use either these two graphs at the end. And this one's not going through negative 1. This one's pretty close, so that would be F. E is uh, in factored form. Remember here, my R value would be positive 1, and my R2 value, the second root, is going to be 5. So 1, 0, and 5, 0. One zero and five zero. So here's one zero. Here's five zero, and it's opening up because it's positive. So this would be letter E. This one here again, I see the plus sign. Just make them two negatives. When I have two negatives there, you'll see that your H value is a negative two, and your K value is negative four. So negative two, negative four. Notice how this side X axis is counting by twos and then the y axis is actually counting by fours, so pay attention. And then it's a negative a value, so it's opening down, so it's f, i, and e. On your quizzes, um, I graded the front side of one person, I graded the uh, back side of the other person, and I combined your scores. Foolish are you if your partner had it correct, but I didn't grade your paper. Question number three. Describe the transformation of f of x given f of x plus 1 minus 2. There's a silly phrase, add to x, go west or left, add to y, go high. So here's adding to x. So that means your graph's going to go left. And then this is not adding to y, but subtracting, so not going high, not going up, or you're going to go down 2, that would be letter H. Question number four, identify the vertex of the graph, tell whether it's a minimum or a maximum. So the vertex is either the lowest or highest point of your parabola, that would be right here. That has an order pair of the origin, so you can't pick B and you can't pick C, it would have to be either A or D. Now, because he, this graph is opening up, this is the minimum, so that would be D. Maximum is if it's pointing down, right? Your A value is negative. This would be a maximum, right? If you threw a football at its highest point, that would be your vertex. Question number five, choose a term that identifies the effect on the graph of replacing F of X with A F of X. When your A value is greater than one, think about it, it's gonna grow faster, right? If I had like $2 to the fifth power, two X, the fifth power, the my money is going to grow up really fast. And because that happens, um, they call it a stretch away from the x-axis. This means a number between 0 and 1, so like a fraction, like 1 half. My graph is going to be kind of like really 
stretched out there. And when we say compressed, it's compressed uh, this way vertically. Backside. Free response. Use your knowledge of reference points to write in a quadratic equation for the examples. Previously identify as unique parabolas in problem one. If it is possible, write a function, state why or why not. Remember, I took this one directly from your packet. They gave me this point, negative three, four, and it tells me it's the vertex. So I know it's gonna be the either the highest or lowest point. Now I have a point, negative four, one, that's actually below the vertex, so I know it's gonna open down. When it said use reference points, all I had to do was look, identify the axis of symmetry. And if I have this point here, negative 4, 1, it's one unit away from the axis of symmetry. I just count one past it and I have that point as well, if I needed it. Well, how do you write an equation with this given information? Well, it gives me the vertex, it gives me a point, then I can use vertex form. Vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. If you notice what I did with my given information, my order pair, that's not the vertex, I just labeled x and y. My vertex I labeled h and k, and all I have to do is substitute those values in. So my y value is 1, my x value is negative 4, we're solving for the a value, your k value is 4, and your h value is negative 3. Negative 4 minus a negative 3, this becomes plus, so negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Therefore, um, this is really a times 1, or 1a, where we normally don't write the 1 in front of the variable. So I just essentially have a plus 4. Subtract 4 on both sides, I get a equals negative 3. My a equals negative 3, I can write that here. And then I already had my um, h value, which is negative 3, so x minus a negative 3 gives me x plus 3 squared, and my k value is 4. Uh, a lot of you uh, may have written x plus 3 squared plus 4. I only gave you 3 points because you need to substitute in the point in order to solve for a. If you solve for a to be negative 3 but cannot write an equation, I gave you 2 points. Question number seven. Write an equation for the parabola below in standard form. Um, if you notice this problem here, 0, 06, this is a common mistake for students. Classes 0, 06 appear to be the highest point. Here is the highest point. That means 0, 06 is not the vertex. Common mistake. Okay, you don't have the vertex, so you should not be using vertex form, but I have these. These are my x-intercepts, or my roots. R1, or root 1, is negative 2, and root 2 is 3. If I substitute in my value here, negative 2 and negative 3, I have an x value of 0 and a y value of 6, so x value is 0, y value is 6. Don't be late tomorrow. Bad day to be late tomorrow. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and you divide by negative 6 on both sides, you get a equals negative 1. If you put that back into your formula, if you put a value back to negative 1 here, I have negative 1 times quantity x plus 2, x minus 3. If I uh, use FOIL or the box, then I have now standard form. So this is factored in intercept form, this is standard form, distribute the negative 1, you have y equals negative x squared plus x plus 6. Question number 8. It asks you to complete the table and box your answer. i is equal to square root of negative 1. A lot of students didn't uh, show a lot of work, but I still gave you full credit. It's uh, more helpful for you to actually derive these rather than just memorizing them. i squared is i times i, and i is the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is just negative 1. i to the third power is i squared times i. Because remember that's something like i to the 2 plus 1. i squared is negative 1, and there's i. 
Um, negative 1 times i, you can have negative i or negative square root of negative 1. And i to the fourth power is just i squared. So remember that's i 2 plus 2. Um, and then I have a negative 1 and negative 1, and that gives you a positive 1. Question number 9 asks you to simplify i to the 19th power. You can do two options here. I am divided by 4. 4 goes into 19 4 times with the remainder 3. So you have you take the remainder and you put that above. You have i to the 3rd power. Well, you can look above if you do this correctly. That would be negative i, which is c. If you did this by exponents, I have i to the 16th power uh, times i to the 3rd power. The reason why I chose anything to a factor of 4 is that I can do i to the 4th to the 4th power because i to the 4th power is 1. 1 to the 4th power is just 1. And 1 times i to the 3rd is just i to the 3rd, which is negative i. Question number 10. I have 3 plus 2i minus 1 minus 6i. So these parentheses are important. I don't need these parentheses here. This parentheses I'm distributing, so the opposite of 1 is negative 1. Opposite of negative 6i is positive 6i. And then I'm just looking for like terms. Those with the double underlines. 2 plus 6 gives me an 8i, and 3 and a negative 1 gives me a 2, so 2 plus 8i is my answer. If you missed uh, one of those, it will give you partial credit. In question number 11, you'll notice that there is no symbol in between the parentheses, so you're going to have multiplication. So you can either use FOIL or this box that I'm showing you. I'm going to write one of these on the side and one of these on the top. It does not matter which one goes in the side or the bottom. And you're going to do the same thing with FOILs. You're going to multiply and then add. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 6i is negative 18i. 1 times uh, 2i is 2i. And negative 6i times 2i is negative 12i squared. Now if I write all of these out horizontally, now we're going to add. So here I have the 2i plus negative 18i gives me negative 16i. Now, negative 12i squared, i squared is equal to negative 1. And negative 12 times a negative 1 gives me a positive 12. So if you add those two together, you will get 15 minus 16i. Hope this was helpful for you on your quiz corrections.